Welcome back to House of Hoon. As you may have noticed, I'm not in the workshop today. I'm actually at home in my office, and that is because today's episode is about 3D printing brake press tooling. Now, why do I want to 3D print some brake press tooling? Well, it's not to suit my brake press because I don't have one. Why don't I have one? Because they're bloody expensive. But what I do have in the workshop is a 20 ton hydraulic workshop press. Now, it's not as fancy as a proper brake press, but it will give me some of the advantages that a brake press gives over a pan brake. So I could go and buy a metal brake pressing tool to suit my 20 ton jack, but when you have a 3D printer, you make everything with your 3D printer. Now, before we get into the 3D printing, I'll just show you quickly what I've designed in the CAD software. Okay, we're now in my CAD software of choice, which is Fusion 360. I use this for modeling everything that I 3D print and get laser cut. Now I do have to apologise for the recording image not fitting the full screen. I'm using the free app that comes with Microsoft Windows for the screen recording. Uh, if you have any idea how to fix this issue, please let me know down in the comments section below. That would be great. Technology really is not my forte. Now getting back to the CAD drawing. So this is what I've come up with. We've obviously got the top press die in the red on the right and we've got the bottom press die in the blue on the left. For the bottom press tooling, I've decided to make it so there's two sized Vs on it so that you can press different thickness materials because the thicker the material is, obviously you need a larger V to accommodate that. So this should come in real handy for doing different thickness materials. Now, if we go over to the top press tool, We've obviously got the same V which will press down into the bottom tooling right there. Now I've also done a bit of a gooseneck tooling. Now this is obviously not a full on gooseneck tooling because gooseneck tooling is a lot weaker than standard tooling. But by just doing a bit of a radius on the tooling we can get a little bit more clearance uh, for a lot of bends which will be very handy. Now I've obviously got a cutout on the top side of the top press tool. Now this cutout is so that it can fit into the bottle jack itself. I've then just created a loft from that top point all the way down to the edge or the outer edge of the press tooling just to give it a bit more strength when it's actually applying pressure down on the material. Now I've made these press tooling pieces 200 millimeters long. Uh, the main reason for that is the fact that my Prusa printer only has a max height printing capacity of 210mm so I would go just below that to make sure there's no issues with any of the printing and it'll still be quite useful for a lot of projects as well as finding out how strong these 3D printed press tooling pieces actually are. Now that we know what's happening with the press tooling, I'll now save it, send it over to my slicer software of choice which is Prusa Slicer and then we'll be able to send it over to the printer and get it printing. Well, we've now got the printer up and running. So it's just laying down the first layer and at the moment it's doing the 12 millimeter wide brim. So we'll check back in once it's all printed. Well, here we are a couple of hours later or closer to 42 hours, but you get that. Let's open her up. There she is in all her pink glory. Just pull it out. Oh, she's got some, she's got some weight to her. Pop it off the plate. Love the old Prusa plates. Nice and easy to get the parts off. I've now removed the brim and the supports off the prints and they've come up pretty nice. Got a fair bit of weight in them because they obviously are solid. So basically how they're gonna go in the press is basically like that and hopefully that will bend me up some metal. So we'll go to the workshop now and see what happens. All right, we're in the workshop. Now this is my 20 ton hydraulic shop press. Yes, it's a cheapy, but it works really good. Um, I've used it for pushing out tons of bearings, lots of suspension bushes and lots of random crap. But none of that matters today because today we're gonna to be using these 3D printed press tools. So we'll go ahead, get these whacked in and we'll start pressing. I've gone ahead and lowered the top press tool so that we can get the top press tool aligned with the bottom press tool because at the moment there's nothing else to align it. And we're gonna start off with 
bending some two mil aluminium. So in case you don't believe me, we'll try and get that on camera. Two mil. And there we have it, nice crisp bend on this 2mm alley. So we'll now step it up and see how she goes with some 3mm. As you can see, this is 3mm. Hopefully that shows up on camera. And I also turn this bottom V block upside down so that we've got the larger V because that's better suited to the thicker material. There we have it. That's three mil. Beautiful radius on it. Like you can't, you honestly can't get any better than that. And it did it with ease, just like the two mil. I've now got some 1.6 mil mild steel, which we'll try out next. And as you can see, that 1.6 mil steel, it just Bent it like butter. Honestly, just no issues whatsoever bending that. And once again, just a beautiful radius. It's time to step up a little bit. So now we've got some two mil mild steel. Try and show you on the camera just to prove to the internet that this actually is two mil mild steel. Hopefully that's showing up. Now, not gonna lie, I am slightly concerned that I may get a whole pile of plastic shrapnel thrown in my face, so I will be wearing this now. <laughs> Would you look at that? Once again, did 2mm mild steel with absolute ease. Perfect radius. And I'll show you the tooling. As you can see, there's no damage on these edges. Get the top piece out. And we've got a little bit of rounding, but I guess that's to be expected. But it's not excessive or anything, and it's still perfectly usable to keep on using. Okay, so now we're starting to get into the thick material. We're gonna try some three mil mild steel. I was a little bit worried about the 2mm steel that we were bending before, but now with the 3mm, I'm genuinely concerned. So I'll be wearing this for sure. Whew. There we have it. 3mm mild steel. Once again, it's just doing these things easy. I don't know why I'm even bothering to wear a face shield for this. Since I bent that 3mm mild steel easily, I'm expecting this 4mm mild steel to not even be a problem at all. Well, as you heard by that bang, that didn't exactly go to plan like I was expecting. It did start to bend the 4mm plate, but I stopped it because we got a bit of uh, failure on the top print. Now, I believe this is completely 100% my fault that this has happened. So, as you can see by that end, it's actually separated between the layers which is my fault for not getting the print settings correct. Uh, yeah, you can see the gaps between all the layers. Uh, yeah, and that, that's what's let go. It's not the actual material that's caused that. Um, yeah, because as you can see on that side where the layers are properly bonded, it's really not an issue. So it's stemmed from this side here and it's traveled all the way down you can see the, the white mark all the way down the length of it. So I believe if 
it wasn't for my shitty printing skills, um, I would have been able to definitely press this four mil plate because it's, as you can see, it started pressing and I reckon it would have definitely continued to be able to keep on pressing it to a 90 degree bend. The bottom tooling, that's perfect, really not an issue. Um, yeah, no wear and tear other than when you hang a bit of material off the, off the edge of it, then it starts to kind of deform the edge. But other than that, there's, there's basically almost no rounding on, on these edges here which is just really, really great. I'm actually surprised about that. So my takeaway from this is to get my print settings better so that I don't get a failure like this in the future. But overall, I'm actually really impressed with how this has worked. And I think it's actually going to be quite a useful tool in the workshop for bending thicker material and also material that I can't fit in the brake press that we have. I do have a plan to try and make a modular system for these printing tools so that I can adjust the height of where these sit in the press. So instead of it being just there, I'll be able to space it down or lift it up as well as slide in individual pieces to adjust the length that I need for each bend. So I'll get around to designing that and printing it out when I get some spare time. If any of you have an idea for a future video for printing press tools or anything like that, let me know down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. Maybe if you'd like a video on the comparison between PLA, PETG, ABS for press tooling, I can get a video sorted on that. Or if you've got any other ideas, I'd love to hear them. But if you like this video and you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and I'll catch you on the next one.